Alex, thank you for joining me today on this Mario Kart stream. I hope everything is going well with you and your finals. Um, I'm just going to be playing Mario Kart as a part of our Wellness Week events. We're wrapping up this semester just to de-stress and have a little bit of fun. I'll probably talk about some events that we're looking forward to in the spring, some of our library features, and then some of our year-end wrap-ups, um, some music we listen to, some movies that we really like. But first, let's go ahead and jump into some Mario Kart. And thank you, as always, to our moderators in the chat. You can always ask our moderator any questions that you might have, um, even library questions, philosophical questions. They are there for you. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Shy Guy is my numero uno. If you've watched any streams before, then you know this. Um, and I've really liked the Mercedes truck. Not to give them any plug, they're not paying us, but I do like the way it looks. Um, I'm definitely a, a look over function type of Mario Kart player. I'll figure it out, but this is my go-to. Oh, I've been playing Mario Kart in such a long time. There's some games that are just classic. They'll never be out of style, and especially this version. The maps are so beautiful, the online feature is amazing. Even if you don't have online, you can just play the races over and over again. Yeah, and if you'd like to join the, the game, um, just add our friend code, which is in the chat. We'll add you, and then you can join our party, if I can figure out how to do that. If you do add our uh, friend code, just throw it in the chat so that I can make sure to go to our homepage and accept you as a friend. I'm not the biggest fan of Yoshi Valley, but I do like that you have so many different options. You can make it your own map depending on which way you want to go. I've taken the super long route before when I didn't know this map. Ooh. I almost did that in one turn. That's always the goal. I wonder if Nintendo's gonna come out with a new Mario Kart anytime soon. I wonder if it'd be eight or if they just skip it and go to 10 with the Switch version kind of counting as nine. But it has been a while. I think we've been playing this game, at least the Wii U version, since 2016 or 17. So it's been a little while. Switch definitely isn't going anywhere anytime soon, so I'm sure they're working on this, Breath of the Wild 2, which a lot of people are excited about. Um, and if you haven't checked it out in a long time, we do have our video game collection at the Ask Us desk at Hill, and we also have a video game collection right behind the Ask Us desk over at Hunt. If you go through the iPearl Immersion Theater, there's a whole bunch of games back there. And then you can always check in with the Ask Us desk to see what games we have. There is a way on our website to request a purchase too, so if you want a game and we don't have it, you can always ask us to pick it up. And we'll try to do that as quick as possible. We're gearing up actually for to start collecting games for the new generation of consoles, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 5, of course we already have the Nintendo Switch. But we're really looking forward to that. We were able to get our hands on some Xbox Ones. Right now we have FIFA 2022, which is really fun. Um, great for tournaments, great for groups. And we're just waiting for the game labs to open, which they will sometime next semester. We just want to make sure they're as safe as possible with the high touch use of controllers and the tight space and so many people. Um, it's just been one of the harder spaces to open safely. Yeah, we have switches for checkout. You just go down to the Ask Us desk, you take home the switch. I think it's for eight hours. Play around with it, play it in the library. Um, we have a great switch collection of games. And we're always looking to add some more. Let's see, sixth place, last lap. Oh, banana is not what I needed right there. Oh, no. And 
sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. You're in third place one second, and ninth place the next. It's all right, we're gonna come back. Ooh, actually, uh, we should have Ghost of Tsushima. Um, send me an email, Megan. I think I have it, it might be put up someplace special, but we I think we do have it. And I think it should be the director's cut too. Um, if you're looking for the one in PS4, for PS4, I think that's the one we have. Yeah, hope your semester went well. Um, and if not, it's almost over, but I'm sure it did. Hope your finals are going well. And I hope you're looking forward to spring semester. Today is like super nice outside. Um, Hopefully you were able to pick up a wellness kit on Monday and Wednesday, yesterday, outside of the library. If not, don't worry, it was just some note cards and stuff. And hopefully you're looking forward to some nice rest time. First day of class isn't until January 10th, so we get a nice long break this year. Beginning's always a bunch of mayhem. Sometimes you get hit by everything. So this used to be a map that I just didn't like at all. I didn't understand like the potholes and just the different ways around it. But after playing it so many times, it's like slowly become one of my favorites because of those reasons that I didn't like in the beginning. Like, it's so wonky. It doesn't make sense. There's a shortcut that can take you from 8th to 1st. Which I could have taken there, actually. Oh, I totally forgot. Alright, 5th place. Um, I hope if you're tuning in right now that you tune in with us next week We're gonna be playing Mario Kart with Virginia Tech University Some of our librarians Colin and Claire who are super big in the twitch world and Creating this twitch space are gonna be playing I might be playing a little bit as well And then our colleagues over at Virginia Tech um, It's gonna be really fun <laughs> Get up, get up. Mushroom, mushroom, oh. go. It's okay. Aw, yeah. Final lap. For some reason when you have first and it's still early in the race, I just feel like it never goes well. There's always something that's gonna happen. Second race, first place. We like crowns over here. DHL VR. We're gonna try to get this all the way to 2,000 points today. Kings and queens, first place, first place. Look at that crown, doesn't that look nice? I think I'm gonna wait a little bit. No, don't leave. I just got first. Let's see if we can turn this into a little streak. You see that, Virginia Tech? We're coming for you. First place. You're either first or last, Ricky Bobby. No, that's not true. You could be second, third, or even fourth, for that matter. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. But we will enjoy these split seconds. Yeah, so we are in the blue jumpsuit with the crown. 
You can see who we are because we'll be wearing the crown most of the time, I'm pretty sure. Um, one service I want to talk about that we want to get back into the zeitgeist of everybody is we have textbooks at the Ask Us desk. If you aren't aware, we have one copy of every required textbook that you can check out. You can take them in the library for a couple of hours. You can scan some chapters that you need, and then you can bring it back, and you can use that textbook throughout the semester as many times as you need. Um, we just try to get them back if other people are looking for that same book, then you might need to bring it back after your time. Uh, but yeah, we have one copy of every textbook, so definitely remember to check that out when you get a chance. Ooh, close. I think the fire is the most annoying thing to get hit by because you can't see it coming. The fire and the boomerang because they're just like random. The shell, at least you know it's coming. Blue shell, as you can see it coming. The banana that's in front of you, but the fire and the boomerang, you have no idea, it just hit you randomly. Aww, oh, shortcut. Get up. Ooh, over winter break is a great time to check out some streams that you might have missed over the semester. We had all kinds of different streams from our makerspace to craft making to virtual reality, to digital media, to interviewing speakers. We had a whole slate of different um, speakers, events, programs, state of sound. So as you have some free time over the break, definitely take a minute to check those out. I think you'll really enjoy those. And then you can also find some of the videos on our YouTube page as well. And if anybody out there in the ether is part of a club or student organization, we're always looking to talk to folks. We did a really great thing with Feed the Pack. Oh, we did a dance organization. We interviewed a dance organization. Uh, we're always looking for cool folks to talk to um, and learn about the interesting things that you're doing on campus. So please let us know. I think I want to interview Study Abroad next semester. Um, to find out what's going on over there, over the pandemic, and see if people are still being able to go abroad and take part in different study programs. No way! Okay, I got lucky. Do, 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 do. Plug in the library, that's what I do. If I get to play uh, Mario Kart during my day, then I'm definitely gonna plug all of the amazing things that our library has to offer. Um, and especially our Twitch page. Definitely check out our Twitch page. Twim and I made a lo-fi beat earlier this week on Tuesday. Norm made a beat um, earlier as well. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff. We're playing Civilization tomorrow as part of our uh, Global Change series. And I'm really looking forward to that. Our librarian, Sean Bennett, is going to be playing Civilization. I've never played the game, always seen trailers. It always looks super fun, but it also looks like it takes an, a huge amount of time. So I'm looking forward to seeing how Sean navigates through that. Who else is looking forward to the weekend? I know I am. This, this year, time doesn't really make sense anymore. If, if I think back to like January, February, March of this year, it feels like forever ago. But then at the same time, I'm not really sure how we're already in December going on to 2022. Any time to slow down a little bit, I guess, but also to have like more things to do as things open up over the next year, hopefully knock on wood. Um, but yeah, just, making sure to take time. I think that'll probably be one of my New Year's resolutions is to take time to focus on myself, my hobbies, my interests, making sure to go to these events when I see them. Because as we've learned 
over the past year, I think before it could be an easy excuse like, oh, I'll catch the next concert or I'll catch the next um, time that artist comes around or the next event or I'll hang out with my friends next week. Like, it doesn't have to happen today and I think we have more of an understanding that you can't take all of those things for granted, that sometimes you just gotta hop on it. And I think a lot of times the anxiety or the apprehension comes from like thinking about going outside. Once you're actually outside at these events, like they're a lot of fun and you like, come out more energized, um, even as a more introverted person. I think the, the burden of the stress comes from thinking about going as opposed to actually going and being in the mix. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I hope Kings and Neptunes opens up because I definitely miss like a cool spot to just go and listen to music. Um, I definitely want to go see the Ritz. I still haven't been there yet. And I know a lot of great performers go there. Uh, I haven't been to the Lincoln since the pandemic. So I know they're doing stuff. The Poor House is doing stuff. One of our colleagues' bakeries in a set. Um, they're going to be having music in their outside area. So. Definitely plug us in in the chat if you're looking for forward to any shows or any events next year. Um, I definitely want to explore the area more. I want to take some trips to Charlotte. I haven't been to Atlanta, but that's like a feasible road trip. Um, hoping to plan something to go to Washington, D.C. in February. I went there just passing through on a way on a trip to Philadelphia earlier this year and had some of the best Trini food, Trini, Trinidadian food. I don't know how that's how you say it, but Trini food. They had this fried fish with coconut rice that was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna go spend a whole weekend in DC, check out Columbia Heights um, sometime early in the year to just get that road trip under my belt and eat some more of that whole fried fish because like I said, absolutely amazing. And then hopefully go somewhere warm too. That race was so fast. Carpe diem. What the what sometimes wisdom or just thoughts running through my mind. <laughs> Yeah, 2019 or nothing. I think we remember the beginning of the pandemic. We've just been in this for so long that it just, it doesn't make sense anymore. But yeah, hoping, well wishing uh, health and wealth to everyone for the next year. Um, not just material wise or money wise, but wealth and knowledge and understanding and empathy and just having fun and Staying with the people, with the with the folks. Yeah, I'll get off my my soapbox. Get back into this Mario Kart because I was talking so much I didn't realize that I ended up in eighth place, and that is unacceptable. I know Virginia Tech's out there watching, um, studying, taking notes probably on our different techniques. We're gonna have to. I know Claire's been. If Claire's life was a movie, she'd be montaging training for Mario Kart for this event next week. Claire and Colin. I would probably be the coach. And right now we'd be working on our thumb exercises. We'd be working <laughs> on different shortcuts. Uh, I would throw bananas at them probably so they can dodge them and not slip. Uh, red shells, blue shells, green shells, all those would be being thrown around right now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'd be wearing a sweatsuit for sure, because why wouldn't you be wearing a sweatsuit? Uh, I'd have a whistle, and I'd probably grow out my mustache just for homage to Mario and Luigi. Uh, I'd be screaming at Colin and Claire right now. So that's what we've been doing for about 18 hours a day for the past two months. Um, our bosses are super pleased because they have as much at stake in this as we do. I like this. We can run with this. We can make this a movie or a show. I think they made a silly movie when Will Ferrell was really big about ping pong. I don't think Will Ferrell was in the movie, but it was in the same vein. Jack Black, Will Ferrell about ping pong. So we're going to make that rendition of Mario Kart. Where 
everything is way too serious and we'll get the graphics designer from Ready Player One. So I'm sure they're available. We use it as a promotional tool for the libraries. We can get the budget for that. Claire, make it happen. Before you, <laughs> before next week, before next Monday. There'll be mysteries. Colin won't show up to one of the tournaments. Nobody knows where he is, and he is supposed to be the ace for that day. Um, there's going to be Russian mafia. There's going to be collusion. <laughs> There's going to be betrayal, there's going to be a love story somewhere in there. Uh, it's going to be great. So yeah, make sure you turn into that Twitch series, uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart games. Playoff Squid games. Oh. What else happened this year besides Squid Games? Remember Among Us? That was a big game for a while. We played that a couple times in the libraries. Do people still play that? I think I saw some costumes for Halloween. But that game was huge for a while. What a great game for when we're all stuck inside. It just kind of bring people together. I never really was good at that game. I didn't play it enough to get understand the nuances. But it was fun. These races are going by super fast. Yeah, it's a good family game to play. Um, I remember when we played, we set up a Zoom call so we could all be in the same room with each other. And we could kind of laugh and like send clues out and trick people uh, on the Zoom while we were playing. I'm sure Discord, you could do that as well. Goose Goose Duck, that was another popular one. Uh, I don't know if this was this year or last year, but on the transitioning from Goose, Untitled Goose Game, I think we have that for the Switch, and that was a really popular game that came out. Uh, Alex's words of wisdom, seizing the moment, yes. Yes, getting these clips out there. Um, I'm just going to transition into the Twitch, the libraries, one of the libraries Twitch personas. It'll be me, Neil, Norm, uh, Tim, Megan, and we'll, we'll just be on Twitch 24 hours a day. We'll never leave this room. We'll just get snacks. Uh, it'll be great. Yeah, I do want to give a special shout out to Colin, Claire, um, all the student moderators, all the students who have helped work on this project. Uh, there's not too many places that are doing consistent streams like this or using Twitch as a platform for academics. And this has just been super awesome. It's been great to work with you all. And I appreciate y'all creating this space. And looking forward to seeing where we can take it uh, the next year and the year after. That's definitely one thing I learned with in my position as student success librarian. A lot of my responsibilities are to create undergraduate programming, to bring people in, bring people together through the, the, the library from different colleges, so that they can have chances to meet each other and interact with each other and have like experiential learning moments. Whether it's in our makerspace, uh, virtual reality lab, our fishbowl forum. Um, and that was difficult at the beginning of the pandemic, but through doing these events on Twitch, on Zoom, hosting workshops, I think we've learned a lot. And I think it's really important to have these events be accessible, that people can't make it, or if they're even not on campus, they can still tune in and participate in some way. And Twitch is one of those platforms that allows us to do this. So it's been really cool to work with it. Ah. Fellow shy guy, we are friends. 
haven't seen you in ages. I love the chaos of Mario Kart. Like sometimes you just go with the flow and then all of a sudden you pass some people or you just get destroyed by three green shells in a row. But either way, it's just the chaos of these maps when they're playing online with real humans. Sorry AI, there's nothing wrong with AI, but it's just different for now. One day, one day it'll be different. No way, the last banana. Of course I get that. Yeah, this game is wild because you get people from all over the world to play so seamlessly and like they're mini games essentially, so you can just keep going with the same crew. Um, I always like playing at odd times, like right now. Most people are either at school or at work that would play Mario Kart. So you join in right now, and like you're playing with people from Brazil, Germany, Japan, and it's just wild to think that, like, one, they would probably be tripping out on the fact that I'm here at the library playing for our wellness week, and then I'm like just like intrigued that like this person in Japan what is going on with them is it after school after homework are they is it after work are they just de-stressing like but we all come together and try to hit each other with red shells and get first place nintendo community is fun i've heard from gamers that nintendo is always super fun and just different than maybe like your pc ps4 xbox one gamers um, they kind of take their own spot at the conventions in the game tournaments, but I like it. I do not like that turn. It's very sharp. I gotta figure out how to put my map back up. Thank you for tuning in to this ASMR Mario Kart stream. It's probably the opposite. This is like more stressful than ASMR. Unless this is how you de-stress. In that case, welcome. I don't know what ASMR stands for. I'll be honest. Sometimes I don't make that jump and I have no idea why. Doesn't make sense. so lovely up in Castle Peach, but down here in the sewers, people race every day just to get food. It's 
Some races haven't had food for three weeks. But in this world, you must win to survive. Come on, every time! It is 2.30 in the morning in Japan. That's wild. They need to go to sleep. Ooh, Rainbow Road. Dry bones. I like this map. I've never made it to that top bridge. I'll try it on the next level. Come on. No way. Should have saved that mushroom. At least we both got it. No, no, no. I was creeping up there. I, I absolutely love this game. I hope we get to play some of the Star Road maps and Rainbow Road maps because they're absolutely beautiful. I think there's a way you can play with like the recording of it too. You can record certain races and then you can edit them to get different camera angles. Um, I haven't played too much with that, but I know you can make like your own mini movies of your highlights if you wanted to, which is really cool. Yeah, we got to get that crown back. Right now it's on Iron Man. Don't worry, DHL, I got you. We're coming. We got some more people. 
Uh, I do want to let you all know too that the libraries will be open over uh, winter break. We might we will be closed for that week of Christmas to New Year's, but other than that, we will be open. We might have limited hours, but for all of that info, you can always check lib.ncsu.edu. Um, and while you're there, that's a great place to just check out all the different features we have. If you want to set up a tech console over winter to study like a camera or a software um, that you've been interested in but haven't had a chance to check out, that's a great time to do that. And then if you need articles for your, for your classes, like scholarly articles or data sets, um, you can go to our articles tab on our homepage in the search bar and then you can find those and you can always reach out to the ask us desk um, or the librarians to get help with that function as well um, but yeah take advantage we have so much cool stuff in tech lending um, some of it is special requests but then you get to take it home for a little bit longer depending on how long you need it um, and some of the stuff you can just come up to the desk and grab so check out our website tech lending for that feature um, and while you have some time over winter break, it's always good to pick up a new hobby or pick up something you've been thinking about. Come on by. Another great event to check out on our Twitch stream uh, was a Making Space event run by Lara Fonte, where she interviewed a couple who actually are full-time Twitch streamers. I can't remember what their Twitch name is right now off the top of my head, but they, it was a really great interview. They had like the whole setup with their gamer chairs, with their room, different camera setups, and they just talked about the difficulties, um, some of the, the positives of being a Twitch streamer, what are the challenges, and it was just a really, really great session. So definitely recommend checking that out. Hey, if we're only at the 1400 point of online points, Players are really good, and that are amount of practice. But usually, when you play with the 1000s, they're a little bit easier. No way! Look, I'm in double first place. Do 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 don't know what happened there. His and hers, yes. Hey, big stream. Yeah, super cool. I feel like that's a good part. The a big part of being a streamer is you gotta have the what's it called? You kind of like your window frame set up really nice, and when people comment, it'll come up, or if they donate to your stream, it'll pop up. You have cool colors. And then you gotta have a cool gamer chair and some like neon lights. Uh, it's just gonna add to your aesthetic. We have this cool green screen behind us, which is why you can see me in the corner of the screen. Uh, there's just so many different things you can do. Lighting is one thing that I think our students age, the, the majority of our students age, like that 18 to 20 year olds, they have that down packed, the LED lights, uh, light strips. Gotta get that vibe lighting. In my day, way back in my day, the cool thing was to have Christmas lights on the inside of your house. And I think that's kind of transformed into the LED lights. 
which also makes for a great aesthetic while you're streaming, playing music. <laughs> I'm not sure if I know how to set up green screen, I just know that the screen behind me allows me to be nice and cropped out amongst the Mario Kart playing. We've come a far way with OBS. OBS is the software, it's free, so anybody can try it, um, which is great. But it's it's doing so much that it's pretty complicated, like it's capturing your screen, it's capturing a webcam, um, it's adding text at the bottom, you can put in the widget to have the chat like you can see with our stream right now. Um, definitely took us a while to really fully understand it. I'm not sure if we ever do or if we ever will 100% understand OBS. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I think we've gotten to a place we've passed the learning curve to where we can at least get along with it and do some really cool things. But if anyone's interested in capturing their live stream or doing live stream streaming, uh, I definitely recommend checking out OBS. And that's something, if you have a tech console, we can, we'll find somebody here who can help you out with that, for sure. OBS likes to do its own thing at its own time. Um, something, sometimes a quick quit and restart will solve all your problems, and sometimes nothing will. But it's always fun, it's always an adventure with OBS. I think a lot of people are like, I think I'd be a good streamer, and I, I play a lot of video games, I'm good at video games, I can keep a conversation going, I think I'd be a good streamer, but once you actually get into it, like finding the right microphone, finding the right chair, finding the right computer or laptop that can, that can do all of the work without overburdening it itself, like there's a lot that goes into it that you wouldn't think about right away, you think you just need like a webcam and some type of screen capture. But as we have found, if you want to do it consistently and you want to take it serious, then there's some there's some thought that goes into it. And it can get expensive, but I think there's ways now where you can make it affordable. You just might have to find some like workarounds or make it kind of customized to yourself. Um, but it's definitely fun. And it's definitely a cool way to express yourself. I remember when my little brother was in middle school or high school and he would watch some of the early ninja streams and I never really understood it, you know, just as the old person. Back in my day we used to play video games, not watch people play video games, but he was watching one one time and I happened to be in the same room and just kind of saw like how it all works and I was like, oh I totally, I totally get this, like I totally understand why you want to watch this. Back on the podium, third place. And ever since then, it's just blown up. I think especially with the pandemic, it's sped everything up. And hopefully these computer chips aren't stuck in supply chain issues for too long and more people can have access to their custom PCs and build their own systems. Um, if, if Facebook is on the right track, which who knows if that's a good thing or a bad thing with their, with their path to meta, um, it looks like we're going to be integrating more and more into digital world um, as we know it every day. So that'll be cool. OBS is just OBS, yep. Or you have, you just turn the graphics of everything down and live with the stutter for the moment, yep. Definitely never know everything about OBS. Yes. OBS its own thing. If you were to tell me that OBS had its own AI and thought independently, I, would, I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree. Be like, yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes it's grumpy. Most of the time it's nice though. Yeah, 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 I like this race. Alright, third place. Maybe we can make that push in the first. What am I at? What am I at? Where am I? 15, 17. Alright, we're getting there. It's a harder than I thought.
Uh, yeah, earlier I was talking about what games, what what kind of moments over the year that had kind of captured our attention. Uh, I know Pokemon Pearl just came out, the, the remake for the Switch. Uh, I think Diamond and Pearl, a lot of people have been playing that and I'm very jealous. I think it was super fun. Um, I think I played Let's Go Eevee this year, which is a throwback remake of Pokemon Yellow. That was really fun. The new Xboxes came out, the new Playstations, there's a lot of great platform titles for those consoles if you can get your hands on one. Um, played a little bit of FIFA when we hosted the game tournament uh, about a month ago, and it, it's just so crazy how far that game has come. And I know that people will be excited about new Maddens and Blockbuster titles like NBA 2K and Call of Duty. Uh, I know people will be excited once we can get Smash Bros back in the game rooms. There is a huge community of them. I hope they're doing okay. I hope they're finding places to play Super Smash Bros. They were in here like every day. Uh, it was a bummer to have to close down the space. I know Cyberpunk 2077 had kind of like uh, issues in the beginning with their launch the new consoles, but that was supposed to be a new platform. I think they're fixing a lot of the bugs as we go. Metroid Prime, the scary one came out for Nintendo Switch. I know people were happy about that. What else? What else? Ghost of Tsushima came out at the end of last year. That was a big game. I played my first Assassin's Creed this year um, in preparation for a class that was studying Steampunk. They were studying steampunk, and so we played the game that takes place, the Assassin's Creed that takes place in Old England, which was really fun. Metro Dread, yes, the scary one. That's my scary one. Hello, I do miss that game place, yes. Cleveland Public Library, thank you for joining us. Well, we gotta play Mario Kart with you guys one day, too. Uh, if you have the, I'm sure you have the Switch. Or somebody, one of your patrons will have the Switch and we can team up and play. Yeah, multi-library tournament, that'd be super fun. Gaming at Cleveland Public Library. Yeah, we can do that for sure. Cleveland was a super cool city. We went to, what was it, ARL a couple years ago in Cleveland? And I was just like pleasantly surprised at the food and the architecture. Um, we went before, it was winter, I think it was like late fall, so it wasn't super, super cold yet. Just like cold weather. Um, saw the stadium, saw the lake, went to the convention center, ate some really good ramen at a spot that was downtown. Um, was there with a bunch of library folks. Yeah, had a blast. Definitely want to go back to Cleveland.
focus. I can't see. Mexico, Italy, Germany, England, Canada. This is a global tournament. I like it. Do, 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 do. Megan, to answer your question, I think we have Ghost of Tsushima on PS4. Um, let me know if you don't have a PS4. Yeah, I would definitely like a, a tour of the public library. That'd be really fun. People of the world gather in this tournament of ultimate gaming. That is Mario Kart 8. Alright, Megan, we'll figure out. We'll figure out how we can get you to play this game. We'll find something somewhere. Maybe we'll just have you stream from beginning to end. That'd be a fun game to stream. I think it is, according to the trailer, it's visibly like aesthetically beautiful and dark so that'd be a really fun game do 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 That'd be cool, man. I don't know if anybody has streamed a game from beginning to end yet. And then if you just continued your progress and saved it on the PS4 that's here in the streaming room, then that'd be really fun. You just do like, you won't be able to play it at your leisure. You'd have to play it whenever you can get a stream in. Um, but I'm sure we can find a bunch of time for you. So if you're into it, that'd be super fun. And we can bring in guests who maybe have played it and talk about their own experience or people who are in the design and they can talk about the design aspect of the game. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun. This was always a tough race for me. I don't know why. Ooh, maybe that's why. I don't like narrow races. I like being able to take large turns and drifts. Yeah, I think it's the curves and it being so, like, tight turns and narrow spaces. I always end up getting hit by something. talked about games. Uh, what about music? What music do you want to I mostly listen to like old school music. Um, I found a lot of Maze and Frankie Beverly. Which some of the 
you might know because Beyonce did a cover. Um, it's also just a great classic song to play at any barbecue or event. Um, what else? Kay Trinata just dropped a really good EP with three songs. One of them with her, one of them with Thundercat, and one with Makami. The song with her is just beautiful. I can't wait to play it for um, for New Year's on New Year's Eve because it just has that bounce. Yeah, the Spotify uh, rap is all up. I don't use Spotify. I have, I use Tidal personally. So I don't know if they do a, a end of the year wrap up, but I'm really interested in seeing it. And every time this comes out at the end of the year, I always want to see um, what like what I spent most of the year listening to. I know I spent some of the summer and in the fall um, listening to a lot of '90s like teen rock, like Blink 182 and The Offspring, just really angsty, like fast, uh, good drums, Green Day just to get the, the wiggles out, and I really like that. Megan's going to a concert next week in Charlotte, nice. Um, video game music, yes. Anime is my most played genre, yes. I've heard a lot of people say they wish that Zelda's, some of Zelda's music from Breath of the Wild was available to stream because they would listen to that. Um, I definitely like using that for study music. J. Cole, of course, dropped an album, The Off Season. Uh, hopefully next semester in a stream or in person, we're gonna talk to the person who did a lot of the graphic design for that tour and for his new shoe. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Dreamville Festival, hopefully, knock on wood, will happen in April. So we'll probably do some programs around that as well. But that was a really solid album. And of course, always great to support the local artists. There's been a lot of raves at the Durham Fruit, which is like a cool venue that's opened up again recently. A lot of local DJs who play electronic music and EDM. Um, always fun to go and just sweat away the week. Isaiah Rashad had a cool album that came out this year. Um, a lot of house music. AC Slater to charm me for some more of that deep house. Heavy House, but also some old school ones like Mojo and Stardust, Daft Punk, uh, stuff that never goes out of fashion. I found some really cool young artists recently, one of them's named Coltrane, another uh, one that's been on for a while, it's Masego, just really good vibey lounge music. And then always looking to go back into like the 90s for hip hop and R&B. 2000s, I think are appropriate to play again because it's kind of like retro enough, nostalgic enough to play some old like T Pain, uh, Ludacris, maybe. Depends on the vibe. That's a lot of what I've been listening to. Be curious to see what y'all have been listening to, what you're looking forward to. Records. I think she sold 836 albums or albums per stream. I'm not really sure how they calculate it these days. What is a stream worth? Nobody knows. I think she did like 836 copies in a week, which is crazy. Super wild in the streaming era. I think Drake did 600,000. Kanye did 500,000. That was a big battle, I guess. A lot of music came from those two. Rest in peace to Virgil Abloh, the first black designer for Louis Vuitton. He passed away earlier this week, um, but definitely left his mark on the hip hop and fashion world. Thank you for everything that you contributed. Japanese lo-fi, definitely, definitely. Yeah. They're, they're, the good thing about the streaming era is it's become, at least for me, super fun to look for music again. I think for a while it was just like, ah, oh, 
I don't want to go through the iTunes store or YouTube is nice, but it's hard to find like songs that you can then stream later. But now with these like playlists and then going to certain people's track radio that you like and having the algorithms choose a bunch of different songs, that can be good. Um, sometimes it can be bad too because then you're just letting the computer pick for you what you're listening to next. And there's certain things that go into that with record labels. They pay to have their artists come to, on the top of the algorithm. So it's not like you're getting a true sense of that genre or the similar artist to the one that you like. But as long as you balance that out with some like exploration on your own, I think you get a good round idea of the music that you're looking forward to. Let's see what time is it? One, two, three. All right, play like five or six more races. Um, hopefully you come home with a first place. It's been hard. Hard in these Mario Kart streets. We got three shy guys. Yeah. And they're all faster than me. I also like that there's a bunch of new genres now. There's alternative pop, there's indie pop, synthwave, uh, funk house, future bass. Like, music isn't just in these four or five boxes like it used to be. Like hip hop, country, rock, classic rock. There's, there's too much music to be boxed in like that. And it can be hard because sometimes you're like, I like this song, but I'm not really sure how to find more people like this artist. Like, K. Trinata's one who's just so unique that when you try to find other artists who have a similar vibe, it can be difficult because it doesn't really fit into a genre. Um, but I love it. I love that there's alternative hip hop, there is indie hip hop, um, indie pop music, soul, neo soul, neo, new, new, N-U, R-B. It's just yeah, a good time for creators. I think a lot of projects were shelved last year just because of the pandemic and people want to be able to tour their new music. So now I think this year and hopefully next year we'll get a bunch of really, really good music. And then me and Tim were talking about this on Tuesday with our lo-fi stream. Music is way more accessible to be able to make too. You don't need like a huge production board or a studio a lot of the times. Um, you can sample straight from a software like Ableton or Logic, Fruity Loops. A lot of the softwares that we have in our digital media lab. And you can just go from there. Um, you can learn how to EQ. There's so many videos on YouTube or LinkedIn Learning that will teach you how to use those softwares. And you can make so much um, from the comfort of your home, which used to be really difficult. Third lap already again. Ooh, I don't know what happened there. Middle of the pack, Valencia. Mask name, my nose it. Sorry. Yeah, super obscure genres. Four different types of pop. Everyone got yeah. I'm over here with Squids and King Boos. Iron Man got first again. Yeah, he's my rival from now on. Let's see, we've talked about music, we've talked about video games, movies. Uh, what movies have I watched this year? Ooh, I watched The French Dispatch by Wes Anderson. Like a bunch of short stories. I won't give it away, but I really liked it. I think if you like Wes Anderson movies, then you'll like this one because it's very Wes anderson D. If you don't like his style of movies, if you don't, uh, if it's not 
to your aesthetic or visibly pleasing, then you'll probably won't like it. Because he very much dives into his quirkiness in this movie. I uh, really liked The Green Knight. I really liked... I want to see The Last Duel. I haven't seen it yet. But I did like The Green Knight. Um, what else? The Harder They Fall on Netflix. It was a really cool movie. I recently rewatched The Revenant. Uh, kind of just had on in the background and forgot how beautiful the scenes in that movie, if not not so much the story, the story's pretty gnarly, but the, the visuals from that movie and the way it was shot, it's really cool. Uh, I saw this movie called Zola that A24 put out, and like a lot of movies that A24 be producing, it was just super unique and like different type of storytelling, so that was cool. Play Games was big on Netflix. What else? What else did we watch in 2021? Watch a lot of Shark Tank with my partner. We like to pretend that we come up with different ideas or that we would invest in certain ones. I think A24 is also coming out with a rendition of Hamlet with Denzel Washington over Christmas break. I think that's going to compete with the new Matrix. Ooh, which I'm a little skeptical of because it was... The first and second movie were really good. The third one kind of tailed off, like most trilogies. Uh, but it's been so long that I don't know if they can bring back that vibe. But I'm definitely going to watch it. Fishburne is Morpheus, but I think they're going to do like a young Morpheus, so we'll see how that works out. And the CGI, the CGI back in the day was so like groundbreaking and revolutionary that today I'm sure it's way different. I watched a lot of cooking documentaries on Netflix. Uh, the Chef Show, Chef's Table, Street Food. Uh, I love those shows. Not the best cook myself, but I could watch people cook all day. Seven. No bueno. See, yes. Third Kingsman is about to come out. Yes, there was a Godzilla anime. Nice. Let me see, I have a list. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Movies. I went to the movies to see The French Dispatch for the first time in a couple years. It was the first time in a movie theater and it felt good. I didn't know if I'd ever um, feel comfortable just with like feeling safe and healthy in a movie theater, but it was nice. Went to the one in Cary. Let's see. Movies. Judas and the Black Messiah. That was a good movie. Hard to watch. Mm. Dune. Dune was a cool movie, really great visual effects, cool music. Um, I feel like they didn't like have a lot of story in that movie, but just visually like it made up for it, which was kind of unique. And I know they're planning on making that like Dune 2, Dune 3, so maybe this was just the intro. Um, the Harder They Fall, I saw that, The Many Saints of Newark. I want to watch the Anthony Bourdain documentary, I love watching his show, speaking of food. Uh, it's called Roadrunner. But it's not out on streaming yet. I think I could rent it. Yeah, and then I watched a documentary on the Comedy Store, the Comedy Club in LA. It's been really popular. That was cool to see just like the roots and like how historic it is. That's about it. Yeah, Matrix CGI still holds up today. That like first scene where Morpheus and Neo have a kung fu battle after he downloads all the different like jujitsu and martial arts technique into a system and then he like learns how to use them absolutely incredible still holds up today for sure especially around this time of the year because i think they would come out around christmas with those lord of the rings 
I always find them like Star Wars, those big, big movies, big family movies. Fun to watch during this time. That's why I watched The Revenant the other day, but it's kind of just like, yeesh. There's so much that goes on in this movie. And especially now that you know where it goes, it's like, kind of hard to watch again. as well the 50 or 100 and it's just like he gets the ball and he like kicks all of them at the same time absolutely incredible absolutely incredible i think i read some cool books this year too let me see read a book called going all city about a young graffiti writer in la back in the 90s i read a book called mixed plate by joe coy he's a comedian who's filipino blew up over the past couple of years. Read a book called Wild Thing, which is Jimi Hendrix biography. Uh, really good, detailed story. Read this book called Fiber Field, which is about healing your gut biome, which was really interesting. Um, Go Ahead in the Rain, Notes to a Tribe Called Quest, which is like a homage to Q-Tip and Fife Dog, which is really cool. And then this book called Breathe by Ricks and Gracie, one of the Gracie brothers who start, brought jiu-jitsu from Brazil over to the U.S. I'm trying to read a book called From Flying Toads to Snakes with Wings. That sounds amazing. About cryptids and mysterious creature legends. Yeah, I like that. Cool title. Yeah, I'm hoping to finish one more book before the new year. I haven't had much time to read lately. Or at least I feel like I haven't.
Man. I'd really like to have something I could use as defense. No! <laughs> so close! And I gotta go downhill, uphill, there's a red shell and lightning. They did everything they could to stop me. They gave me a blue shell, red shell, lightning, squid. They did not want me to win. So once you get 10 point coins, you can go a little bit faster than your normal max speed, which is pretty cool. I didn't know that until like way long. I thought it was just for fun. But if you have 10 coins, you get to go a little bit faster. Yeah, that was crazy. We're going to do a couple more races here. Look at the crown. We are back. Back on top. Let's see if we can make a little streak out of this. But yeah, thanks for joining our wellness stream. Um, good luck with your finals. Don't forget to de-stress a little bit. Play some Mario Kart, play some video games, listen to some music, watch a movie, breathe, do some yoga. Don't forget to exercise. Um, one of the things I always say is it's odd that once things get stressful, the first things to go are like good nutrition, good exercise, because we just think we're too stressed to make those things happen. But those are the things that help us get through that stress without it all coming as like a wave later on so just make sure to take some time to yourself there's quiet spaces in the area in the library if you need to get away from your your dorm or your roommates um, we have some events going on still and the library is going to be open past the semester so definitely come check us out watch some twitch streams and yeah take care of yourself to those of you who are graduating next summer or over the winter, congratulations. Um, definitely wasn't, the, the circumstances definitely weren't the easiest over the past couple of years, so make sure you take a second to appreciate your accomplishment. Do, 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 do.
I get older, I think I look forward to the holidays for food. I'm gonna stop by La Superior and Durham to get some tamales at some point. I don't know if they'll be for Christmas Eve or Christmas exactly, but sometime around then, I'm gonna go get some tamales. I haven't had them in a year, I think. Tamales, pupusas, some rice. I think I'm just hungry. I think I missed lunch today. I'm gonna go eat lunch after this. I'm going to do one more, one more, one more, one more race. Yeah, they would probably would be corrupt. And then like, how do you beat Japan in Mario Kart? They'd be like the rulers of the world. Yeah, food and food and time off. That's what the holidays are about these days for me. Food, take a couple days just to veg out, relax, and rest, exercise. That sounds quite nice. All right, y'all, last race, and we are out of here. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget the library will be open over winter break. Uh, we're closed for the week of Christmas to New Year's or over the holiday. Uh, but that's it. We'll be open at different capacities. Just check our website. Um, and as always, check our website for if you want to set up a tech console, if you want to check out some technology, if you want to play a Nintendo Switch or take home some Nintendo Switch games. Um, thank you for joining us today. to the last lap. Good race. Good race. Good race. No mistakes made. Good job, Daniel. yeah that is my time with you today thank you for joining us um check out our other twitch streams check out our library over break look for events on our website and then good luck with your semester the end of the semester appreciate y'all tuning in today um and thank you megan 